Breaking news, TMZ has just released footage of a mysterious debate between the British naturalist Charles Darwin and the American economist William Graham Sumner about their interpretations of Darwinism. Charles Darwin published On the Origin of Species, establishing the theory of natural selection, claiming that the species of nature that are best suited for their environment will thrive and others will die off. However, the 19th century began a philosophical movement that took Darwin's idea of natural selection and applied it to the human society. William Sumner, a strong supporter of laissez-faire economics, used in his defense the idea of the survival of the fittest, coined by British philosopher Herbert Spencer, to oppose government intervention to alleviate poverty. Sumner claimed that the hard-working, wealthy Americans should not have to give up their hard-earned money to help the poor who were ultimately responsible for their condition. Whose idea is right? I'm not the judge. Let's just roll back the clocks and enjoy this piece of hidden history. Quiet, quiet, attention. We will start off by having each one of the debaters state their case, and then they will ask each other questions for clarification. Sumner, open first. Laissez faire. Let the people do as they wish. Darwin, let me preface this by saying that your theory of evolution is remarkable, but its idea of natural selection and survival of the fittest can also be applied to the world economically and socially. A poor man exists in society because he chooses to fail, and the rich succeed out of their own well-being. In fact, a drunkard in the gutter is just where he ought to be. Men in society either conform to the constrictions, obey the rules in advance, or they become imprisoned, poor, or even die. The men who survive and succeed are the ones best adapted to the constrictions of society. The wealthy are the ones who are the fittest. The men who live on are the ones who are the most ideal to what society says they are, and the ones who fail deserve to. This is absolutely why the govern <coughs> I'm sorry, the wealthy, hard-working man should not be obliged to help the poor and struggling through taxes. Sumner, your theories are extremely unethical and not what I implied at all. My scientific studies show no evidence that they can be applied to mankind. My intent for publishing On the Origin of Species was simply to define the biological premises of plants and animals in comparison to their physical environment. While I know a little to nothing about politics, I do know we are not mindless victims to nature. We have free will and compassion for others, which prevents us from being subject to natural selection like the animal kingdom. Natural selection applies to the natural world, but men have created an artificial society that defies the harsh conditions of nature. Additionally, there exists a point in society where even through the hardest work, a man cannot escape his poverty. Let me ask the first question. Why shouldn't the government help the struggling ones in need get off the ground with some financial aid? The government should not interfere at all with the economy. In reality, if the government is helping the poor, then it will ultimately be taking away from the wealthy who are better adapted to society. The government must take money from some man who has earned it to give it to another. If we keep rewarding them, the poor, then they will never learn how to work for their money, like the wealthy. The government prevents the lousy, inefficient poor from being weeded out, preventing our industrial economy from t continuing to grow. But some Americans need this financial aid because of the society they are born into. How can it be his fault when a poor man is born into poverty so great that he cannot escape? Well, obviously, there must be some way for them to escape. Look at the entrepreneurs of today's day and age. Carnegie, Rockefeller, those who rose from rags to riches. They became the wealthiest people of our day and age. I do not believe that there exists a point where a man cannot escape his surroundings. Did Carnegie need financial aid? Rockefeller, huh? Huh? I don't think so. If Carnegie and Rockefeller did it, why can't everyone? Hey, those are exceptional cases. They did the right thing financially at the right time, but just by working hard, a poor man making $5 a week cannot become wealthy to that degree. The majority still remains in a great state of poverty because those who are above the point of separation are elevated, but those who are below are crushed down, as political economist Henry George says. The poor men are not where they are because they do not want to achieve wealth, rather because society prevents them from getting up. What are the advantages of the unfit being naturally removed? When the unfit are removed, then a more efficient society with more hard-working people emerges. What makes you so against my theories? Is there some tragic event that you can foresee in the future? 
We'll see this here, this crystal ball. When I look into it, I can see the atrocities that will occur thanks to the radical application of your now somewhat innocent theory to humans. Imperialism in Africa and even a massive genocide across, the, across Europe targeting one ethnicity will be justified with the incorrect notion that one race is superior to another. Historian Richard Weikert will say this of us, Darwinism by itself did not produce the Holocaust, but without Darwinism, neither Hitler or his fellow Nazi followers would have, the, would have had the necessary scientific underpinnings to convince themselves and their collaborators that one of the world's greatest atrocities was really morally praiseworthy. Your theories are too radical and will result in nothing but bloodshed. Well, thanks for tuning in. We will let you be the judge of that. But today, we look back and realize that Darwin's premonitions sadly came true. But we ask ourselves, should countries be governed by the few and elites who are fittest for governing, or by the majority? In this case, social Darwinists believe that elitism helps society as a whole. They did not promote egalitarianism, in fact, they attempted to dissolve it. They believed that poverty was strictly the people's fault, and that it was the elitist's responsibility to create a well-governed society. Opposers of social Darwinism argue otherwise. They seem to want an equal society. The social Darwinism movement in industrial America shows that Americans at one point were not all supporters of an equal society. In fact, some want it to be unequal. Well, you stay classy, San Diego.